Hey, how's everyone going? Thank you for watching Eastern Volleyball Network. My name is Graham Wren. Uh, my other usual co-host, Kevin Knight, is not able to join us today, unfortunately. Uh, here to bring you a recap video for the Wilmington tournament uh, that happened this past Saturday, June 5th. Uh, before I dive into it, I know what you all are thinking. Um, I've kind of changed my appearance a little bit from the standard, you know, frumpy looking t-shirt into this uh, nice pink polo shirt. And if you're wondering, did I get dressed up just for you? The answer is yes. Um, I also work on the side because my uh, volleyball passion does not pay the bills. But, you know, you can definitely view it as me getting dressed up for you. And for that reason, be sure to smash that like and subscribe button. Um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into the finishes. Uh, taking first... Andrew McMurray and Brian Tillman. Second, myself, Graham Wren, and Misha Freistada. Uh, third, Matt Helmick, Mitch McDowell. The other third, Larry Selefsky and Matthew, Matthew, Matt Hazel. Uh, fifth, Brian Dirks and Colton Williams. Uh, the other fifth, Giora Sella and Zeke Isidoro. Seventh, uh, Robert Vipond and Trent Donahue. Uh, the other seventh, Nick Spitchiger and Brian Christopher. Ninth places, uh, Dave Fisher, Hunter Weinkoff, um, John Wynn and Ethan Atkinson, Colin Register and Max Cashion, Adam Hyatt, Josh Daly, 13th, Lee Reitzel and CJ Amber, also 13th for some reason, Pyle, despite uh, bailing on the entire tournament and you know messing up our prediction video. If you're wondering why no prediction video for this uh, tournament was aired, it's because of Pyle, so you can thank them for that. If you come to TVA Big Money on June 19th, be sure to thank them in person for us not posting a prediction video for this Wilmington tournament. Um, at They were the sixth seed going in, so once they bailed, it kind of threw off just about every matchup. That being said, briefly going to talk about predictions that were still relevant because we did get... Uh, we had Pyle taking a fifth. But the other fifth place, the two third places, the second and the first, we all got correctly. We had Andrew and Tillman winning uh, despite my protests and not getting a vote on that match. Uh, we did have myself and Misha taking second. We had Helmick and Mitch as well as Larry and Matt taking third. Uh, Dirks and Colton taking a fifth. So pat on the back to us. Great job, team. Um... Kind of some thoughts for uh, thought thoughts on the day. Um, it was kind of humid, not super humid, not super hot, but uh, you know, it was uh, it was warm. It was toasty. There was a good reason. Uh, I think just about everyone had their shirts off, which was you know, I think a change from where we've kind of been up until this point, where you see a lot of people with shirts half on, half off. Uh, Leggings half on, half off, uh, maybe some three-quarter length leggings, but it was it was hot enough today that just about everyone had their shirts off, except for, I believe, uh, Trent Donahue was still out there in all black, including uh, black tights, which was an interesting, uh, you know, an interesting choice. Um, but all the credit to him in the world, because you would see that and you would think that he would be the one to overheat and full body cramp, but it was actually his partner, Robert Vipond, who uh, full body cramped and a uh, ambulance had to arrive, which was much the talk of the tournament. Um, so they ended up forfeiting their uh, seventh place game and taking a seventh that way. Uh, notable kind of improvements on historic finishes. Dave Fisher and Hunter Weinkoff. Uh, this was actually Hunter's first uh, series of open wins. Um, they beat Colin and Max in the opening round and quite possibly the longest uh, opening round match I've ever seen. Easily took an hour and a half. I was refing that match. Um, so awesome for Hunter to get that first win. Uh, Nick Spitchiger and Brian Christopher hadn't played many open tournaments and took a seventh. Um, I'm even going to go so far as to say that they are the pride of Fayetteville. Uh They've been known to allow Matt Helmick to train with them from time to time. And, uh, you know, it's good to see some ballers back out this way from Fayetteville. 
Um, rough finish for Pyle. You know, taking the 13th as the sixth seed, you really hate to see it. Uh, we'll see what they can do to bounce back. But I would say, if I was going to describe their performance this time, I'd say it was lackluster. It looked like a lot of heart was missing um, and just kind of just felt like they weren't even there in person. Dirks and Colton taking a fifth. Uh, they played Larry and Matt Hazel in the 4 5 matchup. Um, I don't remember who they played first, but they beat somebody first to get to get to this point. Um, but then Larry and Matt ended up being a little too much. I didn't get to watch that match, unfortunately. It would have been a good one, but uh, Dirks and Colton were unable to, to uh, win that match. Uh, they they were fortunate, and they got the uh, they got the forfeit due to uh, Vipond and Vivon's cramping. And they, so I did get to watch them with a lot of interest play uh, Matt Helmick and Mitch McDowell. And kind of in my head going into that match, I would have thought that it would have been relatively straightforward for Matt and Mitch. Um, Col Colton at, you know, Colton is a very shoddy player. Um, you know, meaning he, he wants to cut a lot. He wants to shoot high line a lot. He'll hit some jumbos and kind of a hard driven swing is something he only kind of does to keep you guessing it's not one of his main ways of scoring and I would have thought that you combine you know a 6-7 Matt Helmick with speedy Mitch Trambley behind him in the uh you know behind him in the backcourt and I would have thought that would have been a pretty lethal combination for Colton uh but you know hats off to Colton for finding a way to side out well enough to take game one uh Helmick and Mitch then took game two they went to a deciding third set and it was it started out kind of Helmick and Mitch's way, and then Dirks and Colton kind of managed to just kind of keep hanging on. And Matt and Mitch again pulled ahead and switched up 12 8, and then Dirks and Colton somehow found a way to bring it back. And they actually got to the point where it was 14 serving 12. Uh, I believe either Dirks, or, I believe Dirks sided out a point to get the 13 14. Dirks then goes back and hits an absolute rocket of a jump serve from uh, the right corner to the left sideline that went untouched and hit a nice little divot too and popped like eight, nine feet up in the air um, to tie it up at 14, which was awesome to see, you know, someone hit a serve like that in crunch time down 13, 14 in set three when it really matters. Unfortunately, they went on to uh, then give up that next point, you know, to a side out and then to give one up inside out and lost 16, 14. Um, as far as kind of my day went, we played Matt Helmick and Mitch in the, uh, winner's round of four and, you know, they, they, they came out pretty fiery and they were competitive, but at the end of the day, I think, uh, myself and Misha executed a little too well inside out to be, for, uh, them to be victorious and we were able to generate some points. Um, I think we definitely benefited from both Matt and Mitch being predominantly left side players and then kind of trying to figure that out, you know, who was going to side out from the right and then uh, trying to figure out like, so they ended up starting out with Mitch on the right and, you know, trying to figure out how to side out from the right with a uh, six foot seven machine up, up at the net against you is probably not, not an ideal circumstance. Um, so we were able to capitalize on that, and they ended up switching back and forth a couple times, trying to figure that out. Then in our semifinal, we uh, we played Larry Selevsky and Matt Hazel. Before before I get to, uh, well, yeah, I guess I'll just talk about this match. Um, we started out, you know, kind of Larry's kind of the you know steady Wilmington presence that we all have you know, grown to know and love. Um, so we decided we were going to start out on that and kind of, you know, see what happened there. And it was my opinion that Matt came out pretty jittery, um, struggled a lot, and we jumped out to a pretty commanding lead in the first set and ended up winning like 21-12 or 13. Um, and then all the credit to Matt in the world – um, and, all, and I also think it speaks to kind of the steadiness of Larry as your partner where they came out set two and kind of were a completely different team and 
managed to bring it all together and, you know, managed to start playing some pretty good volleyball, which is not easy to do after, you know, af after doing that in a set. Uh, we ended up winning the second one, 21-19. Pretty crazy finish to that one. We, at 19-19, I, th I think we were serving 19-19. Served a ball and, uh, you know, kind of kept it alive. Point went back and forth a couple times. Um, I ended up I ended up getting a, like, diving one-hand stab dig in a scramble situation that I dug uh, into. No, you know what? Okay, I'm going to back up. So man I managed to get a dig set, and then uh, I ended up having to kind of recycle the play. Recycled pass pass uh and like i'm i'm off the court on the right and i like bump set back over my head towards towards misha up to the net and he ends up kind of ending up recycling the play again um and i kind of one arm stabbed the ball into the net um and misha managed to put up an absolute pearl out of the net like the ball was on his was on the left side of him he ended up managed to get underneath it and like set it back up in the air on the right side of him out of the net, which was pretty amazing. Um, and then I went, I went in and just hammered the ball for the point, go up 2019. Uh, and then this is where things get a little dicey. Um, probably Matt, in my mind, Matt Helmick's best play of the day, who was refing the match. Um, I managed to get another dig and Misha ends up uh, going to handset this ball, and it was just chunk city. It was it was one of the most egregious sets I've seen in a long time, and you know a lot of things kind of happened there. Like the my first thought was like, you know I took I took I took a step to time with his touch. I then threw up in my mouth a little bit, swallowed it, and took my second step to then go and try to hit this ball. Um, simultaneously, while all this was happening, my brain told myself, you need to hit this ball as quickly as possible or contact it as quickly as possible so Matt has less time to watch this ball spinning in the air, and that's exactly what I did. Um, they were still kind of scrambling on the other side, and I ended up uh, set was in the middle and I poked back to my line, um, kind of around slash over Larry for a point. Um, and you know, before Larry even landed, he was, he was like mid block, saw the shot, knew it was going down and then like turned towards Matt the other direction, you know, like expecting the double call because it, it was, it was that bad. Um, Matt stuck to his guns though, which I appreciate and didn't call the double. Um, if you ask me, it seemed like uh, it seemed like the volley gods kind of smiling our way because there there was a point earlier where we tagged the line and Matt missed it, um, so felt like it balanced out and kind of what was supposed to happen happened. Um, so then you know a lot of a lot of jawing back and forth about this double goes on and we ended up we you know we ended up walking off the court and go over to uh, go over to sit with Misha's wife and. Um, you know, she, she, she then says, she's like, you know, I don't, I don't really know volleyball. I haven't really watched that much until Misha started playing a couple of years ago. So I don't really know, you know, what's a double and what's not a double. But that was a pretty bad double, <laughs> which made us all laugh. Um, and then, you know, to take it even a step further, you know, we were... <laughs> We, you know, we were, we were sitting there and yeah, it, it was just, it was just, it was just, it was, it was a, M Misha had a lot, a lot, a lot of great sets on the day, but that was not one of them. It was just, it was, it was atrocious. Um, probably a lift in there too, you know, taking it from this side over here, bringing it back to the middle and then back over and just all sorts of bad things. Um, to credit Misha's setting as a as a lefty, a lot of times like playing with new partners, we have trouble kind of connecting. I don't know if it's me, I don't know if it's them. It's probably a little bit of both. Um, I usually end up opting for it's not you, it's me. But maybe that just means I'm soft. I don't know. 
uh, but had none of that with Misha. Uh, fell, fell right in, no problem, which was great. We then ran into uh, Andrew and Tillman in the final, who, you know, we mostly went point for point for, but gave up like a four to five point run in each set. So, and that was about all she wrote. Uh, they just flat out out executed us. And I think uh, Tillman's presence at the net was a big reason for why they were able to come out on top. Um, you know, I've, I've been asked by... Uh, been asked by somebody, you know, oh, you just serve Andrew and wait for Tillman to, uh, you know, kind of set kind of dicey. And, you know, that was kind of how we started. That was how we started the match. But to, to Tillman's credit, you know, he was bump setting very well. Um, looked like he'd been working on it a lot. Uh, yeah, he was setting well. Andrew was siding out well. And they, they were just out executing us. So congratulations to them. I don't know if this might be Andrew's first win at Bills. I'm not entirely sure. But Either way, congratulations to him as well. Um, without further ado, I guess thank you for watching EVBN. Uh, like and subscribe helps us out a lot, and I'll see you at the next tournament.